Hello, my name is Irai, and today we're going to look at Vodafone Hub that it's sold in Australia with your NBN connection or ADSL or coax or cable connection. So all these connections, one hub, one device for everything. So let's look at five things that you can change, you can do to improve its security. So number one is change router's password. Number two, disable content sharing, DLNA and printer sharing. Disable WPS, change Wi-Fi's password and optional Mac filtering. I'll obviously explain everything in more detail. And then I've got a bonus tip as well. So let's dive in. So first of all, you're going to have to go to your local address, which is 192.168.1.1. And that's your, that's the default address for the hub. First of all, I would recommend you could to go to settings, configuration and save the configuration. Just in case you're going to make changes and you want to go back to them, then you can easily revert and just restore the settings that you've just saved. Firmware update, most of the time it's automatically updated, so you're not going to worry about it. And that's why I didn't even write it in, in the points here, because by default, the hub updates itself. So most of the time you don't need to worry about it. Okay, so number one, change router's password. So we go to settings and password, change password. So they recommend at least 12 alphanumeric characters. Uh, for passwords, I use LastPass and I press Alt-G when, when I'm logged in. I usually try to go as much as 24 and I'll generate a new one because I don't like when special character starts at the beginning. And copy password, enter, strong password, perfect. And it's prompting me to log in again because I've just changed the password. So great, that's point one done. Second is to disable content sharing, the LNA and printer sharing. Idea is that you have a USB at the back of the Vodafone hub and you can use it to connect your printer or your USB with your movies, music, TV shows or whatnot. And you can stream to your devices. It's not the most elegant or quicker solutions. I think they're better or much better solutions. And even Vodafone recommends you disabling them. Well, if you are not using them to disable them. But I don't believe any of you are going to be using it. If you are, feel free to leave them on. But if you don't, then turn it off. So go to settings, content sharing, enable by default is on like this. So just turn it off. DLNA, again, you have to turn it off and Samba, which is your uh, UNC path. Printer sharing, if you don't have a printer connected, but again, you probably don't like, you don't have a printer or if you do, it's a wireless printer. I don't want to assume maybe you want to connect to it. I don't know, I think there are better ways and I would disable that. So let's go to point number three and that's disable WPS. WPS is a functionality of wireless to make it easy for you to connect without knowing the password. So there's a button on the left hand side, you press it and within two minutes, you should be able to connect with your computer or your device to the network without knowing the password. There have been some insecurities or vulnerabilities um, discovered in the last couple of years. So let's go to Wi-Fi, WPS and disable this functionality. By default, it is enabled. And yeah, you can either activate it through here, through the web interface, or you can press the button on the device itself. So let's disable that and apply. Okay. Change your Wi-Fi password. So by default, your Vodafone hub comes with 
both networks 2.4 and 5 gigahertz enabled which is great I have already changed the network to my previous Telstra network because I had all my devices on and I didn't want to go reconnecting them so I have I'm just using the, the same, I just changed the, the password to what I had and the name to what I had as well. If, if you have a strong password, you can do the same. By default, the settings are pretty universal and easy, everything on automatic. So the device itself chooses what frequency and what channel it, what it uses. And by default, it uses WPA2. If you have really old device that only supports WPA, uh, first of all, get rid of it. And second of all, don't use WPA, just stick with WPA too. It's a lot more secure. And for password creation, I would not recommend using random generator because it's a nightmare to try to type it in on a mobile phone or smart devices and whatnot, or give it to someone else, it, it's just, not very easy. What I would recommend is to use a um, something like your favorite song or a favorite phrase um, or something that is rather at least three words or four words. Use spaces in it and that gives you a really strong password but also very easy to remember. So let's say I like Depeche Mode and I like the song Enjoy the Silence. So I would start with um, lowercase enjoy, then space. So enjoy then space the capital S if there's a requirement for capital S and then you can go zero nine and press shift eight, which on US keyboard gives you an asterisk. It's easy to remember. I would still write it down though. Um, easy to give to someone and it's very secure because it's 20 characters, if I'm not mistaken, 21 characters long. So that's my recommendation for a password. You can choose something shorter, but then again, if I had to go change password, it's at least eight, and up to 63 and if I test this password for security I'm pretty sure it will be strong even though you know password strength in here might not be the best but it still gives you a good guidance of what is considered strong and what is considered a weak password cool Next point is Mac filtering. So you can go to your internet, oh sorry, Wi-Fi and Mac filter option. And here, if you enable, you get to choose whether a device will be allowed to access the network or whether it will have network disabled, access disabled. So this will give you more sort of a control over what devices can, and what devices cannot access the network. The drawback, however, is a hassle as well, because if you have a new device, first of all, you won't be able to access the network because it's not allowed. So you have to allow it first and then you'll be able to allow, uh, you'll be able to access it. It's a bit of a, bit of a hassle and it also only works for wireless network. So if you, if someone sticks a cable into your router, then they'll get in straight away. No questions asked. And also smart people, hackers can spoof so they can change their MAC address to anything they want and to even mimic your device. So they'll be able to get through this, um, through this protection as well. Obviously they would have to know your MAC address first, but it is a, it is a possibility. That's why I'm suggesting it more, more of a optional feature rather than something that I would really recommend. And last but not least, a bonus tip is to use static DHCP. So if you have devices uh, that require port forwarding, like an Xbox, PlayStation, your NAS, or even your computer, 
then you can set up a static IP address, which will assure that always the port that is forwarded to that particular device will always be the same device and it will not change. So you can do that here in settings, LAN, and all the way if I scroll to the bottom, I click plus, and you can choose from the drop down, let's say my iMac, it pre-populates my MAC address, so I don't have to type it in, and it gives it the current IP address, but I can change it to whatever I like. So let's say I want it to be 199, and then I click add, remembers it, and then from now on, my IMAX IP address will always be 199. And if I decide to port forward anything, in internet and port mapping, I can choose, I can choose some, I don't know what port what up forward, but let's say SFTP, it's on TCP protocol and device would be my iMac. Now it still remembers the old one, but I'll go with 199. Public port is 22, private is 22. First of all, I would not recommend you forwarding any TCP uh, ports such as um, SSH to your local device, unless you know that you want this or it's secured, but most of the time I would, I would, I would not do that. Cool. Apply, and that's pretty much all that I had to share with you about how to secure Vodafone Hub. Overall, I'm quite happy with this device. It's well secured and well prepared in, in 2018-19. Although two drawbacks, it only has two ports at the back for my network and they are 100 megabit per second. For a device that costs only almost $200, that's I think ridiculous, but it is what it is. Get yourself a nice one gigabit dumb switch or smart switch if you have the money, but dumb switch will be more than enough. Thank you for watching and talk to you next time. Bye.